the front wheels on my Mini move in ways that they really shouldn't. That's because my bushings are warm. So I could buy some like a normal person, but seeing as it's this channel, we're gonna make some instead. Welcome to Making for Motorsport, where we make more, spend less, and go faster. So none of your studio rubbish today. We're getting stuck in to get this thing back out on the track where it's needed in a couple of weeks. And you've seen the wheels are moving all over the place. So we need some new front bushes because they are knackered. And when you can move the suspension arm quite easily with your <laughs> massive muscles, you know they're knackered. So we're going to take this apart, have a look at why they failed, and we're gonna make some new ones. We're gonna make some molds. We're gonna cast them out of polyurethane, and then we're gonna put them back on and see if it's fixed it. First job, let's get this arm off the car. So they're in decent nick. So I think we might end up keeping them. So if we talk about these ends, this is where I think we're gonna focus and we're gonna rebuild these. So you can see that, which is a hardened one. So this is a, a, a polyurethane bush, the type which we're going to make. You can see how it's spread and it's took some proper hammer. That will be from when the car goes into a reverse very hard because basically the wheels are pulling backwards on the body shell and all of that drive, the forwards and backwards drive of the wheel is going through this front tie rod. So that all that force of banging it into reverse, yeah, well that took its toll on there. So I think this is where we'll focus. So we've come up to the computer um, because, as I said, I plan to cast these new items in 3D printed moulds. So mould making in itself is uh, its a skill, it's an art, it's a career. Um, now, maybe not so much for something like this and very simple like this, but there's several things that you have to think about. Um, and normally in mould making, I'd start talking to you about draft angles so you can get the part out. Um, you, I'd also start talking about um, surface finish. So all of this is so you don't end up with a mechanical lock where the part simply won't come out of the mould. Um, but because I'm going to 3D print these moulds and they will be worth literally pennies to me, I'm just going to smash them up. Um, I've got no desire for this to become an industrial process. So if I need to print any, need to make any more of these, then I've got the 3D model, I've got the SDL, it, it's just a matter of pressing print on the 3D printer. So I've done a drawing of my part, I've taken some measurements. What we need to do is to design it. So let's get 3D modeling. Last time I did 3D modeling on the channel, a few of you seemed a bit more interested in the process. So we're going to a little bit more detail here. So as with virtually all 3D modeling, you've got to start with a 2D shape and then you do a process to make that into a 3D shape. So I'm drawing at the moment, basically one half of a slice of the bush itself. And then I'm gonna use the rotate or the revolve function to create a 3D part out of it so that's basically the bush already done so a few radiuses um, tidy it up and that's our bush okay so there we have it so that is the finished article that i want to make so what i'm going to do now is put that inside of the mold i'll show you how so when i say put it inside what I mean is I'm going to make a mold using the part itself as a, as a blank as a negative 
So what I do to start that, because I know I want the overall diameter to be a certain size of the mold, I know what wall thickness I, I need, I can create that outer extremities of the mold as a blank. And then I drag the part itself inside the mold and use that as a negative to basically cut out the shape I want from that solid mold shape. And I use the combine function to do that. And I basically use the part to carve out that shape. And that leaves me with this. And there you go. Our mold. So what I'm going to do as well is just increase the size of this so that if I happen to overfill the mold, I'll still have this nice center and then it'll overflow the side and all I'll have to do is just trim around the outside and not have to worry about the center. So I'm just going to extrude that upwards by four mil. I think that'll look about right. There you go. So there we have it, our mold, that easy. So what we'll do now is send this to the printer. So now we've got the molds, we need to mix up the polyurethane. So we're gonna do that by combining these two parts equally by weight. And that will give us a sure 85A polyurethane, which is a nice mix. It's nice and firm, but it's not so hard that you can't stick your fingernail into it and get a little bit of compliance. We're also going to put in this nice blue pigment so it looks a little pretty. But how much do we mix up? So on the 3D modeling software, I can tell you what the volume of the model is. So the volume of the bushing is 11,514.6 millimeters cubed so there are roughly a thousand millimeters cubed per every centimeter cubed so that gives us 11.5 centimeters cubed which feels about right for the size of the model and there's six of them and we probably want to save about 20 percent for the pot just we won't get it, everything out we won't be able to clean it out totally Ooh. So that means we need about 82.8, so let's call it 83 centimeters cubed of polyurethane to fill these up. But I can't do centimeters cubed because I've got some scales and I'm gonna work in weight. So I need to know the density. So I mentioned earlier, we've got a specific volume here, which is inches cubed per pound so that says for every pound of material it's 26.2 inches cubed volume well that's i want that the other way around so it gives me density so if you crunch the numbers on that it basically boils down to about 1.05758 grams per cubic centimeter so we plug that into the numbers and it means that we need precisely 87.86 grams, or I'm gonna be shooting for 90 grams of polyurethane. So what we're gonna do first off is put in the pigment and then into the mixing cup. I'll be playing beer pong with later and put in 45 grams of this, 45 grams of this, mix the whole thing together and then see where we're at. Now the time you've got between mixing this and getting it into the molds, something's called your pot life, is only four minutes. So you've got to be pretty much prepared before you start adding them together. So first thing to do is put in the pigment. I wasn't exactly sure how much to put in, but a little goes a long way. So a little dabble, do you? And then we weigh out the two parts as accurately as you can and then mix. And once you think it, think it's all mixed, you mix it some more. And then a little mix for luck, and you can go ahead and start pouring. Now the curing time on this is about four hours to get something that's not liquid anymore. But really you wanna give it a full 24 hours 
to it develops some proper resilience before you try and demold it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today is now tomorrow, and these have all cured off. Really quite tricky to get your thumbnail into. Nice and hard, so it's time to demold them, and this is already going to be trickier than I thought it would be. So, we get our release agent and start smashing. Oh no. Yes, definitely going to be harder than I thought. Aha. Okay, so the method is to cut along it with a with a saw, little hacksaw, and then peel it back. Right, so this is the first one out. <laughs> yeah, so that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, making for motorsport, making mistakes for you. Well, making mistakes on your behalf, so you don't have to. But, to be fair, I'm quite happy the way that's turned out. A little bit of trimming required there, but you know what? I'm good with that. And they are nice and stiff. Right then. Crack on with the rest. We'll call that a success, even if the demolding wasn't. Um, and we can put them back on the car. Excellent. So have they done the job? Well, this is the car out on the next event straight after I made these bushings. And you can see still lots of hard forwards to reverse, locking the front wheels. And I'm happy to say they did the job very nicely. They tightened up the responses and the handling of the front end very well. So they are easily as good as the ones that I could buy off the shelf. So that's it for this video. If you're still watching, please give me the thumbs up. It really does help. And if you're planning on making your own bushes for your car, or in fact, just using your 3D printer for something a little bit out of the ordinary, please let me know in the comments down below. It's always really good to hear what you guys are getting up to out there with your cars. It's been a while since the last video, but we've got plenty of new content coming up very soon, along with a couple of little announcements. So stick around, and until the next time, catch you later.